Welcome to this tutorial on grid resolution and convergence in OpenFOAM. In this tutorial, we will learn to refine a mesh using block mesh dict, change the time step to achieve numerical stability, and perform a grid independence study. To record this tutorial, I am using Ubuntu Linux OS version 18.04. OpenFOAM version 7, Paraview version 5.6.0, and Gedit text editor. However, you may use any other text editor of your choice. As a prerequisite, you should be familiar with setting up a case and creating a mesh in OpenFOAM. You should also be familiar with basic post processing using Paraview. If not, please go through the prerequisite OpenFOAM tutorials on this website. We will use the lid-driven cavity case in this tutorial. This is the diagram of lid-driven cavity flow. Open the terminal by pressing Ctrl, Alt and T keys. Here onwards, please remember to press the Enter key after typing each command. Type the following command to move into the run directory. Let us copy the lid driven cavity case from the tutorial directory into the run directory. Type the following command to do so. Now let us go into the lid driven cavity case folder using the cd command. Let's open the block mesh dict file in a text editor. This is a two-dimensional mesh having 20 cells along both X and Y direction. Close the block mesh dict file. Now let's open the control dict file in a text editor. The time step for the simulation is specified using the keyword delta T. When running the simulation, Temporal accuracy and numerical stability needs to be achieved. The current number is required to be less than 1 to achieve this. Please refer to the additional reading material on this tutorial page for details. It mentions the steps used to calculate the time step. We have calculated the time step for the simulation to be 0 0.005 seconds. So, this will be the value of delta t. Close the control dict file. Let us mesh the geometry now using the block mesh command on the terminal. We will be using the icofoam solver to simulate the case. Type the following command on the terminal to start the simulation. The iterations are now complete. Let us view the simulated results in Paraview using the Paraform command. Click on the Apply button in the Properties tab to view the geometry. Next, let's view the pressure contours for the simulation. Click on the VTK block colors drop down in the Active Variable Controls and select P. Now, let us view the contours at the end of the simulation. Click on the last frame button in the VCR controls. Next, let's see the values of pressure and velocity at the center of the domain. To do so, click on the probe location button in the data analysis section. Probe location filter shows the details of the points within an arbitrary sphere. By default, this sphere is centered at the center of the domain and has zero radius. Changing these parameters will change the probe location or the range of the probe. We need the values at the center of the domain. Therefore, we stick with the default sphere parameters in the properties tab. Click on the apply button. 
We can now see the velocity and pressure values in the spreadsheet view. Note down the value of pressure as we will be using this later. Then close the para view window. Now let us increase the number of cells in the x and y direction to 40 cells. This process of dividing the existing cells is called mesh refinement. Mesh refinement changes a coarse mesh into a finer mesh. Let us open the block mesh dict file in a text editor. Change the number of cells in x and y direction as shown. Save and close the file. Since we have changed the number of cells, we need to update the time step. This is to ensure that the current number is less than 1. Let's open the control dict file in a text editor. For the refined mesh, the calculated time step is 0.0025 seconds. Update delta T as shown. Save and close the file. Since we have changed the meshing parameters, we need to mesh the geometry again. On the terminal, type the command as shown. Let us view the contents of the cavity folder. Type ls in the terminal. We can see that the files from the previous run exist in the cavity folder. Let's remove these files by typing this command. Let's run the IcoFoam solver and view the results in ParaView by typing ParaFoam. Let us find the value of the pressure field at the center of the domain at the final time step. As explained earlier, we use the last frame option to move to the final time step and we use the probe location filter to find the data at the center of the domain. We can see the value of the pressure field at the center of the domain. Close the ParaView window. Similarly, we can find the pressure at the center for more number of cells. Note that the time step is changed for each run depending on the cell size. The following table shows the pressure values for various numbers of cells. This is the pressure versus number of cells plot based on the data. Let's consider that values within the order of 10 to the power minus 3 are acceptable. We can see that the pressure values at 6400 and 25600 cells differ only by an order of 10 to the power minus 4. Any more refinement than 6400 cells will only give us results that differ by less than 10 to the power minus 3. Therefore, the results from a mesh having 6400 cells or more surely gives acceptable results. In other words, the results become independent of the mesh if it has more than 6400 cells. What we have just performed is called a grid independence study. The additional reading material has more details on grid independence study. Please refer to it. With this, we have come to the end of the tutorial. Let's summarize. In this tutorial, we have learned to refine a mesh using block mesh dict, change the time step to achieve numerical stability, and perform a grid independence study. The video at the following link summarizes the spoken tutorial project. Please download and watch it. We conduct workshops using spoken tutorials and give certificates. Please contact us. Please post your timed queries in this forum. Do you have any general or technical questions? Please visit the forum given in the link. The FOSSI team coordinates 
solving feasible CFT problems of reasonable complexity using open form. We give honorarium and certificates to those who do this. For more details, please visit these sites. The Spoken Tutorial Project is supported by MHRD Government of India. The script for this tutorial is contributed by Ashley Melville. And this is Sweta Sridhar from IIT Bombay signing off. Thank you for joining.